I don't know about y'all, but from everything I've seen up to this point, Russell Brand is the man, and he genuinely seems to care about people and wants to fix the problems in this world, this chaotic, woke, uh, super feminist society that we're witnessing on a day-to-day -day basis. And on top of that, he's a fantastic comedian that presents himself with this level of class while letting the taco meet, the chest hair show, and... I just love what he brings to the table, and I've only seen a, a small glimpse of everything that he stands on. Again, I don't know if he's a God-fearing man or not, but pray for him either way. And I'm definitely down to see what went on with the real time uh, with Bill Maher segment from his point of view. So let's get it popping. Now, I went on Bill Maher the other day, and I had a conversation about the mainstream media, in particular, the differences between MSNBC and Fox News. My perspective is that all mainstream media outlets are so beholden to corporate and commercial interests that they will not give you the type of information you need to make valid decisions about the way that systemic power operates. That's my position. So I don't think Fox News is the answer. I don't think MSNBC News is the answer. But the person that I was on the show with, John Hellman is an MSNBC anchor and he was obviously advocating for MSNBC. Just to be clear, he's a human being and I've got, I love and respect all human beings. But what I want to say is that I truly believe that MSNBC are also a corporate media outlet, have incredible biases and prejudices that relate to their funding, their political biases, and some important distinctions around liberal establishment media that I think are worth analysing. So let's have a little look at the appearance on Bill Maher and then we'll talk about why I think MSNBC, if they're better than Fox News at all, aren't better enough. John, I've not known you long, but mm. I love you already. But I have to say that it's, <laughs> it's disingenuous to claim that the biases that are exhibited on Fox News are any different from the biases exhibited on MSNBC. It's difficult to suggest that's, that's... that these corporations operate as anything other than mouthpieces for their affiliate owners in BlackRock and Vanguard. And, and unless we... I'd call that a light smattering of applause at the mention of the name BlackRock and Vanguard, and indeed, two of the biggest investors in MSNBC are BlackRock and Vanguard. We'll unpack that a little more in a minute. I've been on that MSNBC, yeah. mate. It was right. propagandist nutcrackery yeah. on there. Having, you, I went on the show called Morning Joe. Yeah. It was absurd the way they carried <laughs> Good on. Good morning, Joe. Yes. Yeah, it, I don't it. know what it was. It wasn't morning. There was no one called Joe there. No one could concentrate. They didn't understand the basic tenets of journalism. No one was willing to stick up for genuine American heroes. Uh, like Edward Snowden. No one was willing to talk about Julian Assange and what he's suffered trying to bring real journalism to the American people. Actually, the motivation of this video isn't aren't I good. The motivation is there's a lot of things that I wish I'd been able to say that I didn't say because I was on the television and I couldn't concentrate properly. Here are some facts about MSNBC that are, in my view, truly startling and at very least cause for a genuine analysis about the role of the media in our culture. And when we look at the pandemic, and I don't want to dwell there because I think it's revealed enough to us, the stuff they said about unvaccinated people, the stuff they said about mask mandates, the stuff they said about vaccinations, all of it subsequently looks like it was worthy of a lot more conversation. And it's difficult to imagine that MSNBC's financial relationship with for example, Pfizer, did not influence their reporting on, for example, vaccines. Maybe I'm being incredibly cynical. I got to pause it there because I don't want to get completely blackballed and taken off YouTube because they're talking about that that Trump bump, that uh, Fauci, ouchie, and all that sort of stuff. You know the speculation and the, the just utter chaos that ensues when you bring that up, whether you're for it, against it, whatever it is. I'm not here to talk about that today. But if you haven't seen the Russell Brand, Brand clip from about nine years ago when he took on those three people at MSNBC, MSDNC, if you may, absolutely hilarious. Put them on the spot. Hit, hit them with such subtle uh, just insults that it went way over their head. He was making fun of them because how rude they were to him talking about him in the third person. And he just put them on blast. It was absolutely on the money. Definitely go check that out. I'll link it a card for him. But it's obvious if you have any sort of logical thinking and connected brainstem that you could take a step back and discern what each media outlet is pushing. Fox News, leans conservative, but they, they have their liberal ideologues and, and ways of thinking as well. MSNBC, CNN, 
all of those ABC, CBS, all of those sources, they're known to have a liberal agenda. All of them have a bias. All of them do their job in a way that it's facetious. They'll take bits and pieces, their headlines, and they'll twist data to bring the viewer in to, to have the viewer wanting more, kind of like we do here on YouTube with clickbait. I'm not going to act like it doesn't exist, like I don't implement it as well. But these people, they're, they're evil and they despise people and they, they lead them in a direction that is very dangerous to where to the point to where it looks like a civil war may ensue again at some point because they they don't report on the facts they're not real journalists they're out to push a story a narrative to to pin people against each other whether, whether it's black and white black and black whatever they they choose to cover it's all selective which you should know this i know this and that's what he's unveiling and he went on a mainstream platform in hbo bill maher's show and he just unveiled it let it loose and you could tell when a celebrity with his credentials a comedian and somebody at his level who usually takes the the liberal side when he starts to air out all sides and, and doesn't pick and choose he just just clears the air and, and tells the things that we've already been thinking and lays it out in a way that only Russell Brand could do you can't not love this man's accent at, at the very least but I love his just transparency again I don't know if he's God fearing I'll be praying for him either way could you imagine him debating Ben Shapiro, which one could go longer without taking a breath is my question. If you think that MSNBC's relationship with Pfizer affects the way they talk about Pfizer, or maybe that financial relationship with Pfizer doesn't affect the way that they talk about Pfizer. So I'm essentially saying that the vanity of small differences has become this celebrated battlefield where everyone's willing to shout and scream, oh, we would never do that on MSNBC. But look at what you do do on MSNBC. I believe that we deserve an open media. That's why I'm working in these spaces in order to participate in open conversations, because guess what? I might be wrong about stuff. You know things I don't know. I don't want a media that talks down to me, and I know you don't either. I don't want a media that's owned and co-opted by financial interest to such a degree that it's never going to tell you the truth, because it simply can't. Okay, so the story that John Hailmans was referring to was this one. Recent depositions reveal that high-level Fox News network officials privately cast doubt on Trump's claims that the election was stolen, even as on-air voices were backing Trump up on the false narrative. So if they were backing Trump up because of a political alliance that's ideological rather than authentic, and they were willing to say stuff on air that they didn't believe in, I would argue that that's wrong, would you? Let me know in the chat and the comments. It'll be wrong if it's the side you like did it, it'll be wrong if the side you don't like did it. See, if you have principles, those principles are gonna cost you sometimes. Of course, we don't have access to the text messages exchanged between MSNBC or CNN anchors about, for example, the pandemic or, for example, the war. So we don't know what they say in private, but we do know that in the 2016 election, there were lots of claims of electoral fraud. Let's have a look for a moment about how they were handled on the liberal establishment media side. In November 2021, an analyst who was a key contributor to democratic funded opposition research into possible links between Donald Trump and Russia was arrested and charged with lying to the FBI about his sources. The analyst Igor Danchenko was a primary researcher for claims that went into the so-called Steele dossier, a compendium of rumors and unproven assertions suggesting that Trump and his 2016 campaign were compromised by and conspiring with Russian intelligence officials to help him defeat Hillary Clinton. What have you got to back up these claims of collusion and collaboration? Well, we've got a compendium of rumors and Nada. unproven assertions. Well, that'll do. Let's put that on the news. The Danchenko indictment doubled it. as a critique of several media outlets that covered Steele's reports in 2016 and after its publication by BuzzFeed in January 2017. CNN, MSNBC, Mother Jones, the McClatchy newspaper chain, and various pundits showered credibility upon the dossier without corroboration. I liken this too to the recent revelations in the Twitter files that there's collaboration between the deep state and social media outlets. Do you imagine that similar relationships don't exist between conventional media outlets and the deep state? Let me know in the chat and the comments. But nevertheless, if we want to indulge this vanity, what did MSNBC really think about Trump? Prior to the 2016 election, MSNBC gave massive airtime to Trump on behalf of the DNC, which saw Trump as the most easily defeatable candidate. You'll be aware that the Biden administration has funded MAGA candidates that work out? in order to manipulate that electoral outcomes. That's not the kind of political ideology that I want to back. In its self-described Pied Piper strategy, the Clinton campaign proposed intentionally cultivating extreme right-wing presidential candidates, hoping to turn them into the new mainstream of the Republican Party in order 
wanted to try to increase Clinton's chance of winning. Part of the problem, of course, as well, is that similarly, MSNBC and CNN benefited from Trump, deified Trump, required Trump. In fact, what a perfect example for the whole damn Farago. The fact is that they both benefit from figures like Donald Trump that are divisive and incendiary and drive eyeballs to the screen, to their channels, for whom? They're advertisers. Not because they truly care, but just that's the way that the business model works. At the end of the day, whether it's Donald Trump, whether it's Joe Biden, Barack Obama, Hillary Clinton, Michelle Obama, Ron DeSantis, whoever you put in there, they alone are not going to fix the problem. Every politician, every news network is out to push a narrative to stuff their pockets, to bring in views, to bring in clicks, to appeal to the masses as if they care about everybody. But without us as a society, coming together despite our differing viewpoints as men and women and standing on the foundation in which this country was founded on. I'm not talking about slavery. I'm not talking about the past sin. We've progressed from that. We've moved on from that. We've improved. We've repented from those. I'm talking about coming together with moral responsibility and ethical dignity, if that makes any sort of sense, and uniting together to improve the, improve the lives of ourselves, our families, the people around us, taking care of business and not taking care of people if they aren't willing to get on board, work hard, and stay disciplined and keep this country secure. If we can't do that, then we're going to fail as a nation. If we can't unite with an understanding of what actual humanitarian values are and the, the true foundational beliefs that our, our country was established in, then we're never going to succeed. We're never going to last as a nation. There will be a civil war that happens. There will be a world war that happens. If we keep letting the media paint all these, these narratives without genuinely taking a step back, looking in the mirror and say, you know what? Tucker Carlson can't change this. This dude on MSNBC can't change it. Anderson Cooper, Rachel Maddow, none of these people, Donald Trump, none of these people can fix this world on their own. They can't fix the United States of America on their own. On the contrary, they can try to dictate a narrative that drives us even deeper into despair while at the same time getting rich off of it, while at the same time pushing all these false headlines in order to crave or to, to curve the craving of this 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 woke agenda it's not gonna work man men women godly values foundational principles and truth the laws of human nature that right and wrong was created by god almighty the moral compass was created by god almighty it didn't evolve from animals from monkeys we didn't evolve from the fish in the sea none of that there's a foundational way to live and how to value the next man and woman it's talked about in the bible the basic instructions before leaving earth and i will always stand on the foundation of jesus christ because that's my savior he changed my life he gave me something to aim for which is salvation he gave me a way out of this world when i die we're all gonna die we're only on this side of the grass one time. And if you don't have the truth, with, with which can't be found without God Almighty, then all of this, you can acquire the whole world. But what's What's the purpose if you lose your soul? If you don't have anything to strive for, you can't strap a U-Haul to a hearse. You shouldn't be looking in the rear view mirror. It's a whole lot smaller than the front windshield for a reason. Just an analogy that says, focus on the things that are in front of you, the things that God has blessed you with, no matter what cards you've been dealt. And you have to elevate those around you and take care of business. Because when it's all said and done, if you aren't saved, if you haven't repented of your sins truly and accepted Christ as Lord and Savior and you announce him as Lord, the Messiah, the Good Shepherd, Yahweh, Jehovah Jireh, whatever you want to label Jesus Christ, God, the triune God as, if you don't know him, if you don't fear him, if you don't love him and you're not pursuing that direction, it's going to get hot. And, and none of this stuff that you buy into is going to matter. Because when you're six feet under, you're either saved, your soul is in heaven with abundant joy and peace for eternity, or you're in hell with Satan, burning up with regret, with tribulation. And you can't get out of that. So stop putting so much emphasis in your cards into all the political world. I know I react to Fox videos for entertainment to give my perspective on it. Do I agree with a lot more things that people like Tucker Carlson say more than the next man or woman? Absolutely, because it lines up more so with my biblical values. But at the end of the day, all of these people at some point or another are going to push some rhetoric because they have other interests outside of you and I. Most of the time, they're not reporting on the facts. They're delivering whatever they think is going to get the clicks, whatever is going to make their sponsors and, and higher up lords 
which aren't actual lords, happy so that they can take care of business and, and, you know, with greed and pride. And it's not based in truth and love in Jesus Christ. They're not picking up their cross day after day. And that's what I put my trust in. My hope is in God Almighty, right, left. I may lean right. I may lean conservative. But at the end of the day, I pray to God. I drop to my knees and completely sacrifice my will, my wants, my every agenda that I may have. I sacrifice that to God and ask him to work in me and to guide my path, to guide my steps. Men and women can make as many plans as you want to, but the Lord determines your steps. The Lord determines what happens. And he that works everything out, whether you deem it as good or bad, you're not God. You can't uh, fathom everything. Your mere mortal mindset can't put into perspective and context why God does the things he does on his timing. He's going to work it all out to serve his kingdom. So if you don't recognize that fact, that's Russell Brand, that's everybody. If you don't realize... What God Almighty is is here to do or, or what God Almighty is is working all this together to serve is going to be a rude awakening for you. So wake up, shake the dust off, shake all this, this controversy off, stand on biblical values, be a patriot for Jesus Christ. If not, I can't get down with you. I don't rock with you. You may disagree. That's perfectly OK. But let me know your thoughts down below. Let's keep this conversation rolling. I know that's, this got off into kind of a tangent. I love when I get to see a video, see some information and just rant from there. That's that's what I'm all about. But I do respect Russell Brand coming out, picking his battles. And you can see he probably has an opinion on all of these things, but he waits to attack and waits to pursue an, an outcome when when he sees an, uh, an opportunity that's worthy of doing something. Everybody always has something today. Every, it's everybody always has something to say. Everybody has an opinion, just like elbows and buttholes. We all got them, but it's when you're punctual with it. It's when you're poignant with it and you you bring to light a, a way of politics and, and the, the influence that he has when it's right on the money, when it's right on time, when it needs to be said and you see evil and corruption. That's what I approve of. And again, my, my words may get a little twisted. English may get a little mumbo jumbo, but I'm passionate about Christ. I'm pass passionate about truth. And all these media outlets, they don't lean on truth. They lean on their own understanding, which at the end of the day will get you lost. And if you're waging that sin, it will lead to death. So lean on Christ, lean on his understanding and stop letting the ways of this world dictate the, the things that you do and the way that you operate every single day. If you like this video, you like my perspective, Russell Brand, all of that, smash the like button, subscribe if you're not already, ring that notification bell so you get notified anytime I post a video. If you wanna support the channel, you can always get awesome shirts like this made by my beautiful wife, over in her Etsy store. That's linked down below. This says sun's out, guns out. For those of y'all that are scared of guns and scared of the second amendment, that's between you and, and, and your household. If somebody comes to, to rob you and try to take what you got and all you got is, is a keyboard, you got a little uh, wireless remote, you got some flowers, you got a, a, I don't know what you're going to do if somebody breaks in and they're armed and you're not. Bye bye. You're going to meet your maker and hopefully your, ma your maker uh, has accepted you and your have found salvation because if not, you're going down to the brakes of hell. But Outside of that, if you want to support, there's other options. You can always join the Patreon family, donate on PayPal. You can buy me a coffee. You don't got to do any of that at all. Just showing up, watching my freckle face ran at you. I love y'all. I appreciate you. Till next time, Godspeed. I'm gone.